Hey, how's everybody doing today? Welcome to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Been a lot of questions out there, I think. I think I know what we can do. Here we go, folks. After doing a little bit of research and stuff and going back and actually going on to some other YouTube channels and reading comments on different types of videos, I've come to the conclusion that a lot of people really like to know exactly what they should prep and how they should figure that out. So today we're going to do a little quick history lesson and kind of give you an idea of what has taken place over history and what you may want to start prepping with. The things that go first, the things that they restrict the first, the things that, you know, are rationed or in limitations over the course of, say, the last hundred years or so. Now, Black Tuesday, October 29th, 1929, the Great Depression. That's the day that the stock market crashed. And within a couple of months of that, um, you know, most people, businesses, business people, they all lost over $40 billion. Here, let's give you a quick little lesson on history. Watch this video. Ultimate snowball effect. The snowball effect is a process that starts with something fairly small until it builds in size to become very powerful. The stock market crash of 1929 was by no means minimal, but it was just the beginning of the giant snowball known as the Great Depression. On October 29th, 1929, the stock market tanked, and that was Black Tuesday. Two months later, stockholders had lost over $40 billion. Some people mistakenly believe Black Tuesday is the same as the Great Depression, but it was just one piece of the puzzle. The major loss in capital from Black Tuesday resulted in over 9,000 banks failing. Since the banks were uninsured, people lost their entire life savings when the banks began shutting their doors. Banks that did survive were too hesitant to provide new loans, slowing down the economy even further and creating a bigger snowball. People of all classes stopped buying things. No one buying things meant no need to make things and that caused more job losses. At one point, unemployment was over 25%. Quick comparison, the unemployment rate since the Great Depression. As businesses continued failing, the government created a tariff that charged high taxes on foreign imports. And that hurt rather than helped as trade and demand for US goods decreased. The stock market, high tariffs, banks closing, and unemployment, they all combined to make one giant snowball that was impossible to stop until it finally ran out of steam, 10 years after destroying everything in its path. So as you see, it was the big old snowball effect that just kept rolling down the hill, and it took it almost 10 years before it flattened out and got back to normal. Now, back then, between 1929 and 1933, what has taken place was there was rations that were put in place. Okay. Rations of sugar, coffee, meat of all kinds, um, fish, butter, eggs, and cheese was the main rations of the 1929 to 1933 Great Depression. All right. And meat was the very last one that was derationed in 1954. So it went a long time that meat was on rations from say 1929 to 1954 being that that was the last one to be derationed in the United States of America. It was basically scarce. Meat was the biggest thing that was scarce. Okay. Now back then they, um, they didn't have meat with every meal, kind of like how we do nowadays. You know, we're so used to having meat with our meals. You know, you think about it, if you go out to breakfast, you usually you have sausage or bacon. That's considered meat. Lunchtime, you usually have, you know, lunch meat or, or whatever you may have, but that's meat. And then at dinner, you have, you know, your steak, ham, pork, chicken. That's all considered meat. But back then, they didn't get that. But if they did, they always combined it with a bunch of other ingredients to make it go further than one meal. So they would combine it with like potatoes and onions and rice or macaroni and biscuits and whatever to make the meal last longer. So coming up at the end of 
this video, you will get a little pop-up of some videos to watch that's going to help you out and answer some of your questions and get you started on the right track. But pay attention and stay tuned because it's coming up shortly. Okay. So, <clears throat> things that came from the Great Depression, uh, basic different types of food, were your casseroles. Okay, those were created back then during the Great Depression. Uh, chicken and dumplings was another one because it was one of these things that they could make, stretch it out, and the dumplings were made with flour or potato. You can make them either way. And, you know, they stick to your bones. Um, fried egg sandwiches were another one that came out in the Great Depression. No-bake pies were another one because people didn't have all of the ingredients and stuff to make like homemade pies and bake them and everything else. They didn't have ways to do that. But if they made a no-bake pie, say using a Jell-O style product or something along that line, they could make something that was no-bake, but they still had a dessert. And the last one was hamburgers. Hamburgers, believe it or not, back in the Great Depression were very, very cheap. And to give you a little bit on history, if it wasn't for the Great Depression and the fact that the hamburger um, stand started popping up everywhere because people could buy these hamburgers anywhere from five to 10 cents, depending on, I guess, where you were. And at the particular time between 1929, and 1933, it was a very stable meal. You know, you had your bread and your meat. So you kind of got a meal and a burger and that's where the hamburger started. And if it wasn't for the Great Depression, we wouldn't have, more than likely, the hamburger joints that we have now. Mainly being like McDonald's, Burger King, all these types of places. It just wouldn't be there because there was no need for it. Now, January 8th, 1940, we went through another type of uh, rationing, okay? At that point, they started to ration um, bacon, butter, and sugar were the first ones that were rationed at that point on January 8th of 1940. Um, this is right before uh, the war and everything else. Um, and those were followed and preceded by, they added to it, meat, of course, tea, jam, flour, biscuits, breakfast cereals, uh, cheese, eggs, lard, milk, canned goods, and dried fruit was another thing that they added to the rations of the 1940s. And those went on for quite a period until after um, Pearl Harbor and all those um, devastating blows that we took in America. And then once uh, the, the wars had come to an end, then um, the rations started being lifted. And like I did say in 1954, the last one to be lifted was meat. So when you ask yourself, what should I prep? Well, I'd say sugar, coffee. If you know how to put up meat, if you wanna buy it dehydrated, freeze dried, or if you wanna can it yourself, I don't know how to do that, but uh, YouTube channels that really do a lot of great information on that. Alaskan Prepper is one of them. Um, fish, butter, eggs, cheese. Not sure exactly how you would do fish, but being in the, kind of like the world and the time we live in, fish, I wouldn't worry about putting up so much because as long as you had a fishing pole with some hooks, you could go out and do your own fishing and get your fresh fish. Um, bacon, butter, sugar, we're going to go up with the 1940s because these are the things that went and went quick and they rationed them so people couldn't hoard them. Um, your meat, tea, jam, flour, biscuits. Um, your, your biscuits, you need your flour to make the biscuits, so that's kind of an easy one there. Uh, breakfast cereals of all kinds, cheese, eggs, uh, lard, uh, milk, canned goods, and dried fruit. So those may be one of the things that you may want to take a little bit of um, a trip back in history 
Because history likes to repeat itself, folks. It always likes to come back around. And sometimes it likes to come back around and bite us in the you-know-what. So, you know, if you really take a look at history and where history has put the rations, those are the things you really want to try to concentrate on. And then you can add anything else that you would really like to add to the list of ration products that you may think might be rationed in today's society almost a hundred years later. So, I hope that this video answered a lot of questions for a lot of you people out there that have been asking the question, what exactly should I prep for? And what should I be prepping? So we're gonna take a little bit from history and we're gonna run with that for now so that everybody has a good idea of what history has taught us over the years and what we should probably be prepared for and try to look for and put up in our own preps. Because more than likely, those same products would be the same products that would go first again. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for watching my video. Hit that like button, subscribe, share it with all your friends and family, and until next time, we'll catch you all on the flip side.